This is such dramatic lighting. This is fantastic. <laughs> I, th I had a feeling, I wasn't sure which seats would be better. I had a My hair is getting hella long. I told you, your hair is mad long, yo. Mad, mad long. For me. To For whoever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, not, not this, yeah. but that's okay. We respect that <laughs> as being a little different. Hello, party people. Hi. This is the word man, Gary Lime. Uh, this is Kaylee. One word. <laughs> like Cher. <laughs> like Madonna, but not really, yeah. but maybe. <laughs> not a fan. Madonna. Okay. Like, it's I, every single person I know I talk to is just like, oh my God, really? And I'm like, yeah, no. People are allowed to have differences of opinion. Oh, shut up. Here we go. I'm, we're not on Sesame Street. I am indignant and appalled. <laughs> and we are on a street. We are technically, York, yeah, so. it might be Sesame Street. Um, where are we again? Chinatown. Chinatown. We're in Chinatown section of New York City. Madison and um, another street. Uh, not too far from the Golden Diner. There we go. Um, this is where I'm at, friend and friend game show. Uh, this video is for two people. Oh, double header. Double, we got a double header. It is for Mr. Dave Proach and Krista Cassano. Uh, da Dave. Who's Krista Cassano? Krista and Dave, or da or Krista's oh, okay. Dave's girlfriend. Okay. She's super cool. She used to live in my neighborhood in Sunset Park. While you lived there? While I lived there. I wouldn't know. I've never been to a apartment. We, you know, and that's, so friends with this John over here, friends with like what, like 10 years now, something like that, yeah. somewhere around there? Next, about, you know, never once came to visit, has come to visit my place. I've been to your place at least, like, three, times. At least three times. Yeah. Right? She ever come to my place? Never. And I ask her why, and she's like, it's because I'm never going to fucking go there. And I'm like, what the hell did I do? And she's like, won't, and, and just leaves it there every time. To be fair, there is no particular reason, just for public record. It's just, <laughs> I've never been to his apartment before, and he had a complex about it. That, that is 100%. That's playing, 100 playing true. into yeah, we're just playing yeah, into Gary yeah. having issues. There is no real reason why I have never been to <laughs> Gary's apartment. It's just kind of like oh, it's just never happened. Dave's yeah. been there. Good Actually, for Dave. Dave, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Way to go! <laughs> Tell that bust of Shakespeare I said hi. <laughs> Cold blooded. Not that he'd know oh. who I am. <laughs> <laughs> that is so mean. That is so. Kaylee just came out with do. Kaylee came knives out for the fucking friend of a friend game show. Uh, there's a movie about it. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. I it's hear. a good. It's a good movie. I hear. It's very good. That was a movie that I thought was gonna be bad, but then everyone was like, "No, it's actually good." And I was like, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, uh, although I've never seen it. <laughs> it's very good. I, that I, movie you knows what it did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when the boat it came in on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, back to the game show. Uh, I have stuff. I have a to explain how the game show works. But first off, hi Dave. Hi Krista. Hi. They're in West Virginia now. Dave used to be in Philly, and then he just moved down there with her. Nice. They're in Huntington, and. So, um, like. At the end of the year, Spotify does a Spotify wrapped. Oh, yeah, right? I know that, yeah. And um, for some reason, <coughs> it most of the music that I listened to last year implied that I belonged in Huntington, West Virginia. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I've never been. Never. <laughs> in fact, that was the first time I had ever heard of it. So. <laughs> She's like, oh, I belong in Huntington. I should Google where Huntington is. <laughs> I belong in New York City. Yeah. But according to Spotify, you know. Yeah. So the way the game show works, as you I well... blame all that country shit I do. Yeah, a lot of that. <laughs> way the game show works, I have a bag of stuff here for Dave and Krista. However, Dave and Krista are not here. Is it any home good since they just moved? Or he just moved? No, it's oh. not. Because I didn't want to mail, like... I didn't want to mail stuff to all the way down to the West Virginia, like food. Stuff and he can probably Virginia. get it himself. Some of it he can't. He's. I know he's been like. I know he's fiending for. Dave, what was it, Dave? You said you were missing. I think he said soft pretzels. Cause Philly's famous for its soft pretzels. And like, I think you, if I remember right, Dave, you had said you would miss the soft pretzels. I might. I might be thinking of somebody else. Though. So, no. sorry, Dave. The sandwiches, the Philly cheesesteaks. Yes. I have only been to Philadelphia in passing. Okay. You know, one of those like 
11 shows in seven days type tours. <laughs> yeah. And like, so I... <laughs> We're in Cincinnati long enough to leave Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, fun, fun tours. <laughs> so like the Philly cheesesteak. I've never had one from Philly before, but I've always called it the Philly cheesesteak because Philly has always been somewhere else. Yes. You know what I mean? I do. So like these are the sandwiches from Of Philly. that area. Yeah. yeah, correct. And I was talking to you about it, about like where does one get a perfect Philly cheesesteak, right? And you were like, actually in Philly, we just call them cheesesteaks. And I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't call them Philly cheesesteaks in Philly because it's kind of redundant. Because it's where you are. Because right it's actually now. where we are, yeah. <laughs> It's not Chicago deep dish pizza in Chicago. They just call it deep dish pizza. <laughs> you mean pizza casserole? Yeah, pizza soup. Yeah. I see shit. We're, we're, we're very neat. We've become, we've become the New Yorkers that criticize other people's pizza. I feel good about that, yeah. actually. And my parents lived in Chicago for a while, so they love Chicago-style pizza. Oh. And it's I've been a rift in our house. <laughs> <laughs> It makes Thanksgiving awkward. Yeah. <laughs> Other people have very Republican uncles. No. My parents <laughs> and I have the pizza debate. Have the pizza debate. Yeah. You don't have the, like, well, that's why you should vote conservative. You don't have that guy. No. You just have the, but it's a casserole type pizza. <laughs> Your crust is far too thin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I say it all the time. You have a surprisingly well-adjusted family for a family that's not well-adjusted. On the surface, yeah. All surface. <laughs> so we put up projections. Really yeah. Well. How very Irish of you. Yeah. We don't talk about it ever. We just bottle it up <laughs> and keep it in, and it's fine. It's not going to cause a heart attack. No. no. <laughs> So, um, I got a, anyway. anyway, back to the game show. Uh, I got a bag of stuff here for, uh, Dave and Krista. However, Dave and Krista are not here, but Kaylee is. So I'm a little loud because of the train. Friend. She is the official friend of the friend. Um, Kay if Kaylee gets the question right, Dave and Krista, you get the bag of stuff. If she gets the question wrong, I get the bag of stuff. And she has promised to give me her rubber ducky earrings. Check Ooh. them Johns out. Yeah, yeah, pretty rubber cool. Duckies. Rubber duckies. Rubber uh, duckies. Yeah, so, so, you know, game this is serious here. This is real, real serious. Yeah. Um, but I don't play around about rubber duckies. <laughs> <laughs> Never once. Mm -mm, nope, ain't catching her in a lie. This is serious business. <laughs> but before we can ask the question, we got to see what it is we're playing for. So, Miss Kaylee, Jerome Skelton, if you'd be good enough to hold the camera, I will scoot over here. That way, you don't have to... And I won't accidentally turn off the... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here we go. To quote Mary J, you won't have to worry. Yeah. <laughs> you get now you get there. So, so, dude, I heard someone say that Andre 3000 is like our generation's John Lennon. Which is a reach. Yeah! But... That does make Erica Badu our generation. Generations Yoko, Yoko Ono! Ono. <laughs> <laughs> and that is not a reach. Yeah. <laughs> Yo! You just changed my life right now. I'm looking at all this shit differently. <laughs> Holy shit. Damn. <laughs> That's gonna blow Dave's mind. Dave's a hip hopper super extraordinaire. So like he it gonna blow his mind just as much as mine. Yeah. That makes Erica Badu Yoko Ono. Yeah. Some bitch. That really does. Oh, that's the same word as me. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. It does. Yeah. He's definitely not this generation. He's not John Lennon. And I love that guy. I love the music, love his work. I love I, like, I like his stuff more than I like Lennon's stuff. But it would be like me to do that. Yeah. But also, even even that being said, it's like Navi, like it's still a reach. It's still a reach, <laughs> even for someone who's like, no, but put on elevators before I put on Imagine. Like even yeah. I'm like, I nah, was dude. listening to elevators just earlier. Probably what? How does it? I, I, wait, I know it. I stopped at them all the other day. Heard a car come from the other way that I just came from. Some of them were saying something. Talking about, hey man, smoke something. Remember me from school? Said, no, not really. They kept smiling like a clown, facial expression looking silly. And they kept asking me, what kind of car you drive? I know you paid. I know you got buku of hoes from all them songs that y'all have made. Well, I applied that I've gone through the same thing that he had. True, I got more fans than the average man, but not enough loot to last me till the end of the week. I live it, I beat by you, live check to check. You don't move your feet, I don't need you. So we like neck and neck. 
We don't come a long way like them slimming cigarettes from Virginia. This ain't gonna stop, so we just gonna continue. <laughs> I've been playing that shit since I was knee high to a nickel. So you're familiar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know John Lennon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, da, I, no, no bullshit. Dave and I were just talking about Outcast. It had to be like two weeks ago. Whenever he sees this, you know, whatever. It was eight years ago. How about that? All right. And uh, it was yesterday. It was yesterday. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I was telling him like, dude, like when I like, cause I grew up in Delaware, so it's like I didn't have the like. I sort of had the Philly rap experience, but sort of like transposed in this place that's not Philly, because Delaware is so close to Philly that it gets like all the Philly radio stations, all the Philly food, all the Philly slang, all the Philly newspapers, shit like that. So like for us, Elevators was like the song. It was like, yo, have you heard this shit from like these guys? I think they're from Atlanta. Like, it's crazy, dude. It sounds like, I, I had a, a neighbor put it, he was like, it's, and it's Dave's gonna get this more than anybody else in the world. We were talking about it when it came out because somebody had got it on cassette single and he was like, it's like organized confusion, but slower. Organized Confusion is this really great rap group from Queens and they're like super, super hyper visual, but it's like soundscape specific. And there's two MCs who could not be more different on yeah. this like super soundscape type sound, except they were from Queens. And he was like, nice, nah, like them, but it's, it's these guys and they're called outcasts. We thought it was plural. So it was like, they're like outcasts. Well, there, were there weren't two of them, exactly. He's like, they're like outcasts. And like, it's, it's, and it's the only time ever in my life that someone's ever compared outcast to organized confusion because there's only this small window in time where the two of them were kind of similar. Yeah. Because now it's like, you hear the both of them, it's like night and fucking day. It's like yeah. this weird artsy rap group from Queens does not sound like these, AT these Atlanta brothers. But at the time, it's like, no, and, and, and oh, we used to bump that shit every day. It was like perfect get high music. So everybody, my, everybody in my little circle were like major, major weed heads. And it was just like, they bumped, that was that was a blunt tape regular. Every yeah. time they made little blunt tapes, as we used to call them, because they make little, you know, little pause mixtapes that were just for smoking blunts. And like, that song was on there every single time. The the extended version that has like the, basically like the dub plate version, and the instrumental. and. I heard that shit so many times with such a contact high that like, I don't think I ever learned the words before I knew the words. <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, that weird feeling where you're like, yeah. I never took the time to learn this, but I know all of it and I'm really high for some reason. <laughs> I've associated the weed dealer that I knew in high school with natural born killers. Cause that was the movie that was always on in the background. <laughs> like every time I went over to his house, you're like, someone was on the couch watching Natural Born Killers. No other movie at all. No, no, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> you're walking. Which in. is strange because Natural Born Killers is not a movie where you're like, I'm really high. I want to watch. Yeah, I say like that's not a weed movie. Yeah. That's not even like a drug dealer movie. Yeah. Because like I don't. I, I grew up with drug dealers. They'd be like, Hey, let's put on Superfly. Let's put on like. So I, like, I've been with Drupal who are like, hey, let's put on super, something violent, but not like that violent. That's like a different kind of violent. Yeah. That's like, I'm uncomfortable. We need to talk about it violent. Like, yeah. No. No. How good was the weed from that dealer? Mid. See, there you go. Now you know well, why. The weed dealer's weed was really good, but the weed that he was dealing to everybody oh, yeah, else. Okay, that clears it up. Yeah. Okay. I was like, because like, if the weed was whack and he's watching that shit, then you've got to make a correlation, yeah. you know? But if you're saying you got good weed from him anyway. Also I didn't get any weed from him. He was not my drug dealer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm confused with the story. I thought you said he was your weed dealer. He was everybody's, everybody else's weed dealer. I and see. And because he was everybody else's weed the dealer. He was by default. I was, uh, okay. yeah. you know. Yeah, he is not your barber, but if you need your haircut, he is there. Yeah. Okay. I knew we'd find a way to get me to understand. Yeah. <laughs> with cutting hair, something I clearly do often. You know All what I mean? Time. All the time. We got an ambulance coming. It's gonna get a little loud for a second. We're gonna get a good light show, though. Light show, light show, show them the light show. Oh shit! Woo! Oh, we got another one. Number two. <laughs> Dose. This video has gone so completely off the rails, it's yeah. amazing. It's, it's almost 15 minutes in and we haven't even... I haven't even gotten to the gifts yet. <laughs> hold on, hold on. More light show, more light show. Woo! Oh, woo! That's it. I 
think that's it, just two. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna get to the stuff now. Um, so the first thing I have in here for you, good Mr. Dave Proach, sir. A good, pr a good framed piece of Doctor Doom. His favorite villain of all time. Everyone should be everyone's favorite villain of all time. A good Victor Von I Doom. I have no strong feelings about Mr. Doom, but I will um, believe fair. you. That's fair. Not a big comic book person. It happens. Not a big comic book person. So we got that. We're already framed and everything. It's from the... Um, you, I know, Dave, remember, they used to do, like, the Marvel pinups in the back in the back of, like... I don't even remember which issue it's from, but you'll know it when you see it. I've got it here for you. I'll find a place to put it down. Oh, so I know that you are probably... Oh, that's a nice little composition. Oh, Thank good you. job. Thank you. Improving on the camera work. Yeah. And I picked a well-lit area. You did! Did she pick the area, too? Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, I know that you are like short reading stuff where like you're gonna go out to the park to relax or like you or you, Dave and Krista are like, hey, I gotta get away from this like painting for like a couple hours. Let's go go to the park. Let me just get away. Let me find something to distract myself with. And I was like, what a better way to distract yourself than with a bunch of random short stories that I picked. And so I called it Big Al wasn't taking any chances. Nary a chance was taken. <laughs> this is a great Glenn Baxter uh, cartoon, by the way. That's so what I did was I took, uh, I just picked ran seven random short stories. Um, F. Scott Fitzgerald's in here, Hemingway, Diane Oliver is really great. Frank Sinatra has a cold. You're gonna really like that one, Dave. Um, Bears Discover Fire. Krista, you're gonna really like that one. Uh, of course, Dave Goodis is on there. Dave, he knows Dave Goodis is one of my all-time favorites. Shout out to Philly authors. It's not that many of us. And Charles is really great. Charles is a great, great story by Shirley Jackson. I hear Shirley Jackson is, like, pretty good. She's awesome, man. Yeah. Was, you know, I mean, for a girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she walked into it. You got you can't blame me for that one. You walked into that one. No, it's a great... It's actually not a scary Shirley Jackson story, either. It's Liar. Just, no, I'm serious. Like, it's kind of scary, but it's not like a... It's not like one of her haunted stories. It's like she did all these stories about, like, daily life with kids. Nice. It's actually when she was alive, that was her most successful stuff. Was, like the life as an author with like five kids. Yeah. And her husband was also a famous author whose name is not as famous as hers. That's why I don't know it. And, um, it's almost like he didn't create a whole, like, yeah. subgenre <laughs> of fiction. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, um, but I, and I say this, I, I also put little introductions in there. It's that in way color. You, the, the one pages are in lime green, the rest are in white. That way you can delineate where you are. Cause I need to get rid of lime green paper. But, uh, I put in there that like, so Shirley Jackson holds the record for having probably the greatest opening paragraph in the history of, of, of novels with the opening of The Haunting of Hill House. The last- That is good. It's fucking perfect. Yeah. Fucking perfect. Like, I, it's one of those like, like if you were a saxophone player, the last album you play before making a new album is like a Love Supreme by Coltrane. It's like that level good, where it's like, I can't read this before I start writing. When I was in journalism school, yeah. I used to read the introduction to In Cold Blood. Oh, that's a banger. Yeah. That's a banger. I don't so even like good. Capote like that. And that's a banger. Yeah. That's a banger. That they viewed all of their neighbors strangely and yeah. as strangers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the like fires and, like, of mistrust into the, the hearts. The of, like, perfect adverb. Like yeah. the perfect adverb. And like, and use the perfect adverb and then use its noun. Like you never do that. In the same sentence. Fucking brilliant. Like, I, I just... We're nerding out over words here. Right? I'm sorry, we all can't be painters, okay? You know? He's over there going, when are they going to get to the comic book stuff? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mentioned the Charlie Jackson because probably the greatest last sentence in fiction comes from the story Charles. Yeah. The so end. The, uh, <laughs> and it's only like three pages, four pages. So like, but it's a banger. It's a banger. And it's got the great Glenn Baxter cover that I love so much. Um, but yeah, so, and it's also like something where like if you lose it, like who gives a shit? I printed it out on paper. Like who cares? So we got that in here for you. Um, what else? What else? Oh, staying on a literature bent. We got two books, one for Dave, one for Krista, or switch them, either or. Um, what's that? Oh, that's of the bird. So I'm on this push, as everyone knows, to get more people to read because I can't stand the fact that so few people read. Dave is actually quite the avid reader, so I don't have to worry about that. Krista, I'm assuming, is a pretty avid reader. I, I don't know. Actually, no, she is, because I've seen her book collection. Excellent book collection. You would like her book collection very much. Um, so I was going through the books I had going, what's a book I have that Dave doesn't know about that Dave would really fucking like? He'd be like, like two months from now, hit me up like, yo, Pa, are you the one who sent me this book? Because as I mentioned before, Dave talks like he's in a 1996 rap video. Nice. It's Love that. that. Uh, oh, oh, it's the best. 
He'll be like, yo, Pa, are you the one who sent me this book? And I'll be like, yeah. He goes, yo, that, that shit was dope, Pa. And I'll be like, word. He goes, yeah, I like Tao, then we'll go into it. Uh, so I had to pick a book that I thought you would say that about, and it's The Last Good Kiss by James Crumley. It's an excellent crime fiction book. Um, it's crime fiction, mystery fiction. You already know what you're getting into. It's not cops and robbers, but it's definitely in that vein. If you like the Friends of Eddie Coyle, and I think you are I think you do, then you'll love it. And I got you a really dope bookmark. It is from The Shining. It's basically a piece of film, 35 millimeter film strip of shots from The Shining. So I thought I saw The Shining before, like it was a movie I knew backwards and forwards, but I realized when we watched The Shining in theaters together, that I had never seen The Shining Completely before. Completely different movie. Yeah. And fucking way scarier. I feel that way also about Full Metal Jacket and yeah. 2001 A Space Odyssey. I think, I think he might just be that off, that, that kind of, that director where it's just like, look, if you're going to watch Kubrick, like, just put the camera away. Just put the laptop away and go find, like, a big screen. The first time I saw it in theaters together, I was with Gary, and like 45 minutes before this triple feature, Oh, like, yeah, that's right, that's <laughs> right. Tell him the story. This is a good one. He was just like, hey, so I know we're going to see The Shining tonight at midnight, but like Rosemary's Baby and like Suspiria, it's Suspiria. I think, it's Suspiria yep. were playing before it. At the same theater. At the same theater. And do you want to go see those? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, oh, well, if you do, they start in 45 yeah. minutes. Can you get two boroughs or one borough away to get there on time? On the G train. On the, yeah, on the G train, which... Dave, you don't know about. Krista used to live here. Krista can tell you the G train. That's not even a real train. Like it's so fucking bad. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's so horrible. And um, I had to go to work the next day. Yeah. And like regulars were like, "Are you okay?" Yeah, yeah. And I just be like, "I don't really have a clear answer to that question." <laughs> but it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but we did make it to all three. Yeah. Which is weird because. One thing you may not know about Kaylee and I is that like we are terrible at making plans together. Like the stars have to align on the oh, yeah. second full moon yeah. of like the third month. Well, which of is the, a perfect example. You know, like we planned to, like we were gonna go out and get pancakes. Like we were like, hey, let's like go to a diner and get ago. pancakes. We've been doing this back and forth, like rescheduling three for three weeks. Because for three weeks I've been like, Kaylee, I want pancakes, and you're like, oh, we'll go to this spot I know in Chinatown. And I'm like, all right, and then a reschedule, and then a reschedule, and then like I didn't feel good, and then another reschedule. So like, and that's normal. So the idea of us making three movies in one night at the same movie theater when we were 45 minutes away, it's an excellent, it's very, very, very Yeah. Cool. It's either that or like, I'll be like, I'm at the Strand, do you need anything? Yeah. And I'll be like, I'm at the Strand, Strand. do you need yeah. anything? <laughs> I'm like, I'm in the mystery section. I'm like, oh, yeah. well, there you are. So the really cool thing is about these, so um, it's literally someone just takes a film, uh, takes like a film reel of The Shining, cuts it out and it's a bookmark. So uh, if you can see in the light there, I don't really know. I got you the one of Jack Nicholson when he's in the the snow maze, or the maze when it's all snowed up. Pretty cool looking bookmark. It's in your book, boom. So we got that in here. I have a book for you, Krista. The book is called The Lady from the Black Lagoon. I happen to know, without Krista telling me, I happen to know that Krista's favorite monster is the creature from the Black Lagoon, the Gilman. I've got him on my wall. Yes, you. that's right, you do, you got the poster. Krista, if I remember correctly, that's Krista's favorite. Um, this is a book about Millicent, I get her last name wrong all the time. Is it Patrick? Yes, I did get it right. Millicent Patrick is the woman who created the design of the Creature from the Black Lagoon. And this is a book all about Millicent Patrick, how like she went on tour to promote the book, to promote the movie, because she was like the lady that made the monster and like, Really, really interesting book about her and her life. Absolutely fabulous, you're gonna love it. And it's one less lime green book on my shelf, so that goes a long way for me. Um, we got you a bookmark. It is of, is it a Fortier? I forget the guys, I forget the artist's name, but like, there you go. Boom, boom, boom. That lady bookmark. looks so done. Oh yeah, yeah, you can tell she's not here for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, if she's I have to She's sick of your shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had a lot of ex-girlfriends with that look on their face. A lot of them. A lot of them. They're not going to let me call them back. <laughs> yeah. Next thing I got here for Kristen. Um, so this is a page from my memo pad. So as everyone knows, where did I put it? Oh, it's over there. Uh, I have a memo notepad I carry in my back pocket that I always put notes on. Okay, it's like, oh, that's a really cool line. I don't want to forget it. Or, oh, that's, I should have this character say that. Or, oh, that's a cool title. Whatever, whatever. Write it down that way. I don't have to worry about forgetting <coughs> And what I noticed after I write all these down 
in, on this particular sheet was that they all made for really good title prompts, like title prompts for paintings, because Chris ourselves an excellent painter. And so I was like, so if Two you're- Two painters in one house. It's, yeah, I was kind of surprised, but yeah. like, I don't know how they pull it off. Cause like, I mean, the space you would need, like two writers in one house, that's fine. It's yeah. like, we just kind of huddle in our own corners, but like two painters, I don't know. I don't know. Comment below how you guys do it. <laughs> but anyway, Chris said, if you look, that has a bunch of different random titles or random, like it was really just random notes that I thought would make good titles for paintings. So if you're looking for a good prompt, like, you know, oh, what, what, uh, uh, let me, some require two, some people require two hands. That's a note on here. Like what painting would that be? I thought it was a really weird, goofy thing. I put little context annotations on the back because again, this is all just a clever ploy for me to get rid of lime green paper. Boom, we got that here for you. Hopefully you will like it. We got that in here for you. Oh, so. A plastic bag. A plastic bag. From the bodega. <laughs> so I have a Christmas request for you, Dave, and you, Krista, for me. Um, I'm not gonna go into it right now because like the video is running long. But basically, I want you guys to paint me, uh, paint two different Kanye, ma Kanye masks for me. Um, I put a little note on the back to explain everything in detail, what it is that I'd like. So if you were trying to figure out where do you get the word man for Christmas, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Again, to quote Mary J. J. Blige again, you don't have to worry. We don't need you that won't. hateration in this territory. Uh, there we go. That, gotta find one that we both know. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I thought it'd be a really cool idea if all my friends who paint and do like visual arts did a Hanya mask for me as a Christmas present this year. I thought that would be a really cool idea. So that's why I'm sending you guys both Hanya masks. It comes with little instructions and little like what a Hanya mask is and what Gary's requests are. So I, thought, I hope that's something you guys would like. And you know, like I said, details are in there. Uh, we got other stuff in here for you. I got a bunch of random Marvel Comics uh, trading cards. These are from a new set called Beginnings. And um, I went through them and, and I'll be honest with you, this is mostly for Dave. Dave is obsessed with Marvel D villains. Like the cornier the villain, the better. Nice. He, nice. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Like yeah. the hours he will spend not talking about Magneto, Doctor Doom, Galactus, not about them, but like Bengal or like uh, Orca or Tiger Shark. He loves Tiger Shark. Can I ask you a question yes. about from someone who like knows almost nothing okay. about, is Batman DC or Marvel? He's DC. Okay. Um, but they put out this new set of like, and it's like the box I got of them. Does that make Superman Marvel? No, that makes him DC also. Oh damn, I thought one was like Marvel and one was DC, okay. No, they're both on one, on one side. Okay. The X Men and Spider Man and Fantastic Four, all the uh, ones that everybody like likes, they're the ones in Marvel. Joker did good. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah I like that. One. There have been I mean, good yeah, Batman movies. Yeah, I mean, it's the smart Scorsese movie, but yeah, it's true. Yeah, <laughs> it's really the kings of comedy. Like, it's the kings of comedy people with like you know, who just who don't want to watch a movie with adults talking. Yeah. But, so cards. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so basically, the cards are like a, a, so many of the cards from this box I got were like Marvel D villains and Marvel D heroes that I was like, this box was supposed to go to Dano and it came to me by mistake. So now you got it. Um, as you know, Dave, I try to help support your painting because he's an excellent painter and you should always support your friends who do dope things. Yeah. So what I did was, now you know I do this, every time I pass the art supply store, I go in and I look for Liquitex acrylic ink because you told me that's the kind you use. So what I got you here already bubble wrapped is I think it's like six or seven uh, Liquitex acrylic inks. I don't really know which colors they were because I basically just went in and, because you know, they don't really have a big supply of Liquitex in the most one art supply stores. Gold. One of them gold. One of them is gold, I do know that. One of them's blue and then there's others. Yeah. But like, I, I know you're always, like you're always gonna need ink. Boom, you got ink. So there you go. And then what else we got here for you? Oh, shit, we got a bunch of stuff in here for you. So, we got you two movies. One of them is Baraka. Baraka is this excellent movie where basically they took like some of the last of this famous brand of Kodak, Kodachrome film camera, a uh, film print, film, film. <laughs> yeah. Kodak film, there we go. Uh, movie camera film. 
And they basically just went to these guys who were like, hey, go to the most beautiful places in the world and film it. And they made two movies. One of them's called Sam Sarah. The other one's called Baraka. And it's, it's basically just the coolest looking shit in the best color ever on the best That's quality. That's the kind of movie your drug dealer would want to be playing. When you're fucking buying drugs. Not fucking natural born killers. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually 100% right. It's really beautiful. The stuff, like, it's just the color is just amazing. <laughs> and so I was like, this is the kind of thing you get painters. Uh, the other thing I got for you is Stanley Kubrick's Fear and Desire because I had to upgrade and buy the fancy new Blu-ray that came out. So that means I didn't need my DVD anymore. And since Dave and I are working on this Kubrick project, I was like, well, he's going to need the... He might want to see the movie before he does the painting. So, boom. It also comes with uh, bonus features and bonus features. So we got that in here for you. We got a couple CDs in here for you. I was like, what's some music I have I can give Dave that he would think is dope? Steely Dan's Asia, fucking classic. ODB's first one, fucking classic. Excellent, underrated Miles Davis album, Round About Midnight. No one really, this is like before he goes modal. And it's like early, not early Miles, but like before kind of blue Miles. So interesting choice. I think Red Gar, is it Red Garland that's on this one? I'm not gonna look it up and read it because I'm not gonna remember. Last but not least, least but not last, one of your favorites, Alice Coltrane. He's a huge Alice Coltrane fan. He's one of the first people on Alice Coltrane. Now everyone talks about Alice Coltrane. We got that in here for you. I have one other thing in here for you. And it's not in this bag, it's in the other bag. I'm getting it, hold on, hold on. The diabolical Biz Marquee. That's right, no home should be without it. <laughs> so that's what we got that's here for you. That's what I've been missing. That, exactly. Biz Marquee. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we got for you, sir. If and only if our dear friend, Kaylee Jerome Skelton, the ma ma maven of the mandolin, can answer this one question. So, because we got you the Diabolical Biz, Diabolical Biz Marquee, one of the all-time greatest beatboxers of all time, probably, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. Like, but can he do it while he raps? Oh, can he? Well, he used to rap and beatbox, but not necessarily at the, at the simultaneous. At the same yeah, time. but he's also like a legend among legends. Yeah, I, like, no. it's like I'm him familiar. or Dougie Fresh. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's so famous that I'm familiar. Oh shit. Oh, hot damn. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I didn't know that. Word. Um, so, fun fact, as Dave well knows this already, Krista might as well, because she's got to put up with Dave. Because here we are all together. <laughs> <laughs> Captive audience. <laughs> because you can't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Biz Marquis was part of the Juice Crew. Famous rap group, one of the first great super rap groups in rap collectives in the history of hip hop. And uh, Kayla Drum Scout, I'm gonna ask you, do you know anything about the Juice Crew? No. Okay, so that means this is gonna be a tough question for you to answer. Yeah. Okay. Now, will we recover? I don't know how. It looks like I'm it. getting, looks like I'm getting some rubber duck earrings. Yeah. That's it, you know, they're all mine. Not my rubber ducks. <laughs> Whatever will Shakespeare do with them? <laughs> My rubber duck. And it would be pretty cool to see it with the rubber duck. You're not going And the gold to. chain. And the gold chain. And the gold chain. Everyone loves the gold chain Shakespeare. It's my favorite. Um, so the question is going to be Juice Crew related. Hope she gets it right. I won't. <laughs> question is, now the Juice Crew as a collective have had many, many members going into arguably the dozens. However, we are going to just ask you to name seven members of the Mighty there Juice Crew. There are more than seven. I mean, there's like DJs and there's other oh. producers and like... And then people will come in and do like a few... Exactly. It's like a Billy yeah. Press and the Fifth Beatle type situation. Yeah. But there are fish like everyone knows these seven. Okay. And uh, I mean, if you knew them, which clearly you don't. But if you did, can you name for us seven members of the Juice Crew? Yes. Boston. There's a... Uh, Craig G. Woo! That's one! There's a uh, Master Ace. Two! There's Biz Markey. Of course, Low three. Low hanging fruit. Low hanging you know. fruit. <laughs> uh, cool G Rap. One of the all time greats. Uh, Marley Marl. Marley Marl, the all time, one of the greatest producers of all time. Big Daddy Kane, who I have heard a reference before, but did not know the context of, like, you know. One of the all time greats. All yeah. time, all time greats. Him and Cool G Rap, all time greats. Yeah. That's six. Can uh, she get one more? Roxanne Shante. Woo! That's great, Roxanne Shantae. Congratulations. You got all seven. 
Uh, definitely. Just I mean, that's the great thing about living in New York. You don't even have to know anything about the Juice Crew, and you know who the Juice Crew is. You get it when you first move in as a part of the. <laughs> it's like here's your lease. Here's your like you know. Here's your first P code. Uh, yeah, here's, <laughs> your uh, first P code. <laughs> here's your Metro card. Here's your a Michael list. Michael Jackson fun facts about, uh, yeah, the, like, about the story never yeah, yeah, Stop. Yeah. I was talking to somebody about that earlier today. <laughs> and here's here's your list of the members of the Juice Crew. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not written down on a, on a memo pad. Big Daddy Kane will be calling you shortly. <laughs> <laughs> He's a nice guy. <laughs> Ask him about Tyra Banks. Don't do it. Don't. Congrats. No talk about Tyra. <laughs> Congratulations, David, Krista. All that stuff is yours. <coughs> Kaylee gets to keep her rubber duck earrings. She's very excited. And um, yeah, I'm going to put this stuff in the mail for you like next week or something i don't know maybe tomorrow i don't know don't judge me i'll do it when i want <laughs> we'll do it on the way back yeah yeah we'll hit that up we'll, we'll, we'll hit the post office in like the middle of the night yeah <laughs> they won't mind <laughs> they're all there anyway yeah they're there they're totally there dave i hope you're doing good i love you chris i hope you're doing good i love you hope everybody's doing good i love you and um <clears throat> yeah man i would tell him to come up and visit but like i have but he's been to he's new york farther away now yeah and he's been to new york more than i've been to west virginia don't give me that look. West Virginia's mad far. Is it though? Just, you know, I'm done talking. I've not been a to California. Yeah. More times that, than you've been to West Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. I earned this. I can't get mad about it. I'm from California. Yeah. From the Bay. Yeah. For context. Yeah. <laughs> She's not just going there to go. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. I hope you guys are doing great out there. I hope you like the stuff. We want to congratulate, we want to thank Kaylee Jerome Skelton as we yell over the train. We want to thank Kaylee Jerome Skelton for participating in the Word Man Front and Front Game Show. And we want to thank Dave and Krista for being part of the Word Man Front and Front Game Show. And um, I think that's everything. Kaylee, say peace to the good people. Peace to the good people.